Welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the people in different parts of the world. Today we are back here again with another student, amazing coaching client, more than a sister to me. And we're going to talk about how she made $27,000 in 75 days of joining our Dream Client Secrets coaching program and going to be sharing and talking about all the gold nuggets, any valuable thing that uh, that she learned inside the program, and it can help you as well in your journey. So if you have any questions, you can post under the comment thread. I'll be watching that. And uh, put a hashtag live if you're watching it live. Put a hashtag replay if you're watching it on the replay. Welcome, Uzma. Thank you so much for giving your time and coming, us, uh, coming on the stage and uh, sharing your journey. Welcome again. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. You're welcome, Uthma. <clears throat> Your journey is really inspiring. I was seeing the comments on my post as well uh, that they, everybody is super excited to uh, have you here. Uh, uh, talk about your journey, how you started and how you did it along with a working, like as a working mom, uh, and then you quit your job, you are now full time into this business, but managing with a kid, uh, that's, that's a super hard thing. Uh, so let's start with your backstory <clears throat> first. Uh, tell me a little bit about your business. What do you do? So uh, I came to US back in uh, September 2018 on spouse visa. I got married and then I came here. Um, one of the things that I've never shared with my audience is that um, I was a food microbiologist in Pakistan mm -hmm. and uh, I was doing research publications and I had three research publications. So that was the intention I had when I came here that, you know what, I will go there and I will find a good job. But when I came here, I realized there's another whole process. They wanted me to, you know, uh, start an internship, repeat some kind of uh, subjects again. And, uh, but, you know, I was just new to this country and uh, we had so many stuff to do, bills to pay, you know, we had uh, to um, rent another uh, apartment. So uh, I, I end up, instead of trying to pursue my career, I end up uh, finding a job. So um, the first job that I found was uh, in a retail store, but I started with that, okay, you know what, just for now, because we have bills to pay, I will just do this job, it's okay. So I started that job and uh, after that, I realized that I was expecting. So now I was like, okay, this job is kind of close to my house. I don't even drive. So, um, you know, I just, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna just keep doing it. But uh, in the end of the day, after four months, um, I ended up losing my child. So uh, that was kind of depressing to me, but at the same time, um, this made me realize that nine to five job is not for me because uh, I knew that, you know, I was working there. Uh, I was moving all those heavy cars, lifting heavy objects, and I end up losing my child. And no matter how ambitious a woman is, this is something she, she cannot recover, right? So <clears throat> I tried to find ways to do different things. At that time, it was in 2019, I did eBay. <laughs> I tried to do live sessions on Facebook to sell different things. Um, but for some reason, I was just kind of making little side income, but not like in a proper in income that I can quit my nine to five. So in 2020, uh, somehow in January, uh, I thought, okay, you know what? Um, I'll try to pursue my career again. Let me do something again. So the same time then I was, you know, about to get admission, I was in the process of getting student loan and all. Um, I found that I was expecting again. And so I was like, okay, uh, maybe it's a sign that, you know, uh, I shouldn't be doing that because it's the second time that I, you know, tried to went there, but something happened. And I, again, the same job, but after three months, COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I kept on doing my job, but it was extremely hard because I'm diabetic, um, plus that full-time job. Um, and definitely um, they are running their own business. They have their own kind of thing. I had to still, you know, uh, go to doctor every single week and still standing at the work, working all the time. So making it short, uh, Rayan was born uh, October, 2020. I was happy because that, that was something, you know, uh, I wanted uh, a family. So when he was born, 
after three months, I, I mean, I those three months, I never even thought that, okay, oh, how am I even going back to work? But after three months, I was like, okay, now what, right? <laughs> and uh, the only option that was coming was daycare. And uh, I was like, what to do? And my husband, you know, he could keep uh, saying me, no, you know what, stay stronger. Every mother do that. It's normal in these countries. But to me, you know, after losing first child and having another with the high risk pregnancy, it was something like I can't even imagine. I, I start sending him to daycare, but every single day I was crying. You know, sometime I was at work, you know, going to restroom, calling him, crying and all. When he was almost seven months old, he ended up getting chicken pox. Again, that emotional thing came to me. I'm like, no, I'm not going to send him to daycare anymore. And I definitely need something to, you know, start working from home. So finally in October, um, in September, I would say, I was watching TikTok all over the TikToks and something affiliate marketing. I don't even know what that is, but I was like, okay, uh, you know, I, I, I need to start doing something. I created some Pinterest things don't even know what I'm doing, doesn't even know what is funnel, what, what is email marketing, just tried things by my way, but nothing worked out. Uh, then in October, I said, okay, you know, all these side hustles, you know, on this TikTok, there are so many side hustles they've been discussing about all the time. I said, you know what, I should try some of them, at least something start working. If I be able to at least make, you know, uh, 1,000 to 1,500 a month, I will at least be you know, uh, able to stay home. So I tried a couple of things and end up, you know, doing transcription. And uh, then, <laughs> then in November, I said, no, you know what, all these things are not going to work. I need to be, you know, serious about it. So in November, I finally, finally uh, invested in high ticket. And that's why my journey started for FM Mark too. It's a very touching journey. I, <clears throat> I didn't know about that thing, Uzma. Even this story you never shared, uh, even inside our coaching program. This is the first time I'm hearing it. Uh, I literally got goosebumps when you shared all that stuff. And it, I can feel, I can imagine that, like how hard it would be at that time. But at the same time, that gave you the, your biggest why, like why you don't want to continue with your nine to five job. Uh, what is the yes. biggest reason for you? And nothing can be more bigger than your whole family or your own kid. And glad you took that step at that time instead of going into some other state of mind, uh, instead of feeling like crazy demotivated and doing nothing in the life. Sometimes we all get into the situation where we feel now it's all done. We have lost it and all that stuff. Life is all done. But you stood up at that time. You tried to pivot your way and try to find out like now this thing is done what else I can do in order to make my life better, in order to make my family's life better and all that. So you did it. You did a brilliant job. First of all, people are really inspired. I see a couple of people commenting that uh, my two best is my two favorites and all that. People who are watching us live put a hashtag live, as I said. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop under the comment thread for me or for Uzma. Uh, we'll definitely be able to answer it. I want to make this interview a valuable one. And thank you so much for everyone to jumping on. So Uzma, when you started with affiliate marketing, let's say when you started watching those TikTok videos and you invested your money in high ticket affiliate marketing, I want to know the duration, how long it took you to make that kind of mindset to invest in high ticket, because this is a major problem I have seen. People, they <laughs> waste their couple of months and even years uh, just in low ticket and they don't even take the courage or leap of faith to invest in high ticket at that time what was what made you to jump into the high ticket um i would say uh, when it comes to my husband's family and his mindset uh, it's more of the job mindset he still has the same kind of mindset but uh, talking about my family back in pakistan i have seen my father my mother my brothers they be doing business all the time um, I have seen times in my life when, you know, let's say there was, there's only last 5,000 rupees in the house and my mother used to sell clothes. And if somebody, uh, because let's say she has some, you know, uh, regular customers and they are paying on payment plans and someone is coming and uh, they're paying 10,000 rupees and we're like, finally, mom, some, you know, there's some money came to home now, no stress. And we have seen her. If she's receiving a payment in the morning, she's investing back again in the night. I'm like, no, what are you doing? We will be left with no money again. And she used to say, if I spend it on groceries, this money is gone. 
end up in our stomach, right? But if I invest it again, I will make another 10,000 rupees from it. So I will double it. And I used to say, mom, I cannot do that. I mean, I sometimes feel it risky, right? So I think first it came from my mother. Um, second, I have seen my brother establishing his business from very little scratch. Like he used to, um, he wanted to do something online and he uh, started selling, I would say, uh, mobile accessories online. Mm -hmm. And uh, what he did was uh, whatever he was making from his online uh, business, he never gave it, he never used it. Every profit, he keep reinvesting it. And now after five or six years, he's at a point where he has his own uh, uh, factory and he's making furniture. It's like imagine start selling from mobile accessories to uh, baby clothes to, I don't know how many things he's been selling and in the end he has his own factory. So <clears throat> my biggest obstacle was my husband was not willing for me to invest because he doesn't have that mindset. Mm -hmm. So the way I still, you know, uh, listen to this objection a lot of time that my husband is not willing. So I always tell that uh, them that, you know, what there is a way to do things. If you are actually willing to do something, you, you, you know your husband better. I mean, no one on the earth knows your husband the best as you. So you know how to convince him. Just try to find that way. So how I convinced my husband He's, he's a person who will spend money every month or uh, every year on the new cell phone, even if his cell phone is working perfectly fine. So, um, and he used, hey, do the same thing for me. Like I tell him, I don't need a new phone, but you know, he just gave me this one last month for no reason. I don't even need it, but he did. So I told him, I said, you know what? Um, I investing in a high ticket was $1,500 at that time. So I was like, you know what? Don't give me a new cell phone for next five years. <laughs> And let me invest that money. And he was like, ah, oh, oh no, no. Why what are you saying that? I said, I'm fine. Anything happened to my cell phone, I will take care of that. But I let me invest it and see the magic. So now he's like, Yeah, you did the right thing. That's amazing. I, I can relate it to that as well. I remember. Uh, when I was investing high ticket in my coaching uh, to learn from a coach, uh, my wife who was girlfriend at that time, I told her that first time I was investing, it was $200 an hour. And then it was $1,000 product. Then it became $10,000 coaching program. Yeah. At every stage, she was like, Sahil, $1,000? Are you crazy? You can gift me something with $1,000. Why do you want to buy yeah. this product, which is not even a physical product. It is just a course that you are buying. You're going to waste your money and all that her mindset was different at that time and for me on the same time I was thinking like this is an asset which will help me yeah. to build myself first and then my business this is not a liability this is not something like a like a phone an iPhone where I'm buying it and then it de depreciates in value it always or knowledge is something which keeps on appreciating if you keep investing it and even when I was going to invest my ten thousand dollar in coaching it was like Sahil you have hardly made ten thousand dollar in last it was not even 10,000. I think it was 8,000 maybe in last couple of months of your hard work. You're spending so many hours after your full-time job. Now you're going to give all that money all at once to one person, like $10,000 yeah. in Canadian currency, it become $13,000. It was not, yeah. she, it was not digestible for her. On the other hand, me was like, if I invest one time, I'll be able to make it many times. That was the my mindset. But then <laughs> you have that thing and similar similar thing on your side i feel great that you had this kind of mindset uh, from the beginning that reinvesting in your business people who are who who are watching us don't just keep the money saving in your bank account if you really want to grow and scale your business it, yes. it, you should have a habit of keep investing even nowadays i feel like that every day i tell her that we have to invest somewhere we have to invest somewhere she's like what if the like, money is in your account? <laughs> yeah. I was like, what it is it doing in the account? I, I don't know. Sure. I keep on booking appointments with financial advisors to advise me better how I can manage my money better. But yes. yeah, <laughs> it's a different... Even in, uh, even in January, uh, like I was uh, uh, making some kind of money and he was happy. And when I decided to, you know, start your coaching, he was like, you are doing good. Why even need a coach now? And I said, you know what? I know, I know I need a coach. If you trusted me in uh, November, let me do it. Trust me on one more time and let me do it again. 
So yeah, like now he can see, even he's the one who, you know, purchased this uh, table and office chairs, like, you know what, <laughs> take your small corner. And <laughs> so, you know, sometimes, yeah, of course, we need, we, we need how to convince, we know how to convince them, right? Yeah. So definitely, uh, it's just that we need to find a way. Yeah, exactly. It's always, I learned from my mentors as well. It's always, when you want to do something, it's always inside out. You have to first yes. feel it inside yes. that you want to do it. You can do it. Sure. And then comes the external factor, outside factor, whether it's husband, whether it's your family, whether it's someone else. But if you are not convinced on your side, inside, you weren't going to do outside, then the outside thing become excuses that my husband is not ready, my this person is not ready, because you are not feeling from inside that you will be able to do it. Otherwise, you'll be able to convince your better half or other family members. Yes. If you know that this is something real, it's not a scam, it's a legit person I'm investing in, and this can give me this kind of return. Yes. Amazing as well. I love the mindset that you had initial from the day one of your journey. I was coming on that to, onto that question where you, uh, like you invested big money, I would say in my coaching. Uh, it was a lead program that you invested in, not just group coaching program. At that time, I want to know your mind, state of mind. What were you thinking? What were the objections that were coming in the mind? And uh, how do you handle that? the only objection because i know i was i wanted to do it but i kind of keep hanging at that time for almost two weeks uh again it was it was from my husband's side because he was telling me that you know you were making almost uh, 2500 dollars from your job and if you are making that average from home just feel happy we we are good we don't need more money and i told him you know what i i always wanted to do something i stopped my career being a food microbiologist um because i needed to stay home but now i have find a way where i can see the sky is the limit so if i can you know spend the same kind of time but still take it to the next level and even you know um, buy my own house here so i cannot so that was the thing again um but remember, I told you, can I get a payment plan? Because I knew that time, between that time, I will be able to, you know, tell him that, you know what, it's perfectly fine. Just uh, just give me your card and I will take care of it. Yeah, I remember that thing. Absolutely. You find a way again. It was not about when it comes to a part where it was a big investment, you try to find it. How can I manage it in chunks if I can't manage it all in one yes. go? And this is... A lot of people are, I have seen, they are not able to digest. They think like that. Let's say my coaching is 3000 and then on payment plan, it becomes $3,500. People are like, no, no, Sahil, why would I pay $500 more to you in the time span of that three months? I was like, you are not understanding it. You are paying yes. maybe $150 extra every month payment, but it gives you a leverage to get that kind of uh, time to manage the other funds. Let's say you get into it one month, like do your best and implement every single thing. It's not possible that you won't make any money if you implement every single thing. Right? In the first month, make even out. Second month, again, even out. And then third month, you will be kind of already making more than kind of income, which uh, you have already, like you will be recovering that income on top of that. Uh, you'll be making more. Uzma, I want to uh, hear from you because you invested that kind of money and when you made that kind of money back in like first how many days it took you to make that money back and what was the feeling after making the profit and all that revenue well i think two weeks yeah i got all of that back so mm -hmm. i remember when i asked you first time that i carry pay into three and then i end up paying into two because yeah. now even you know the, the the external factor or even if there was something that was stopping me i mean i couldn't i could see that there is nothing that i that can stop me now mm -hmm. so uh that that's definitely a feeling like you know i was just telling you yesterday that this twenty seven thousand dollar was uh, the amount that i made from my job last year yeah. and i i think there's no comparison to that feeling because now you can feel like you know uh, at job first of all you are spending your whole day it's eight hours shift and then, you know, um, getting ready, another hour coming back home and exhausted and tired, but you still are answerable to someone. You cannot, you know, spend time with your family when you want to. Uh, and being diabetic, the my, my condition keeps on going up and down. So uh, it's something that, you know, uh, limitless. Uh, I think I cannot even explain it in words. And 
even in this moment i think uh this is the first time i can actually imagine that i can buy a house in the us <laughs> that i could you know never even imagine uh when i was here i used to say i don't know how these people even buy their houses i'm going to live in this apartment for whole my life and now at, i'm at that point where i feel like no um baby by the end of this year or the next year it's coming so that's a hope i can see now will definitely going to come into reality i know that uh, i feel blessed at the same time that he had having because i bought my house recently 6 7 months ago and i was not imagining even some of my uh, colleagues they were senior to me and they were asking me questions like sir how you are putting this much like it was over 100k down i put they were like how can you put this 100k down in it how did you save that because they have having job mindset because 100k saving yeah. in the job i know i knew that it was not possible for me if i hadn't start this business no way i could have buy my first house in canada uh, without this online business income and this only happened because again i keep on investing back making money investing back making money investing back not just making 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 and keeping in the bank which won't give you that crazy return if you want uh, to take your business to the next level i completely understand and uh definitely you're going to buy that first house super happy maybe we'll come <laughs> together to celebrate <laughs> that <laughs> yes definitely great uh okay so for the beginners i want to ask there are a lot of beginners i'm seeing on the live they are watching us what are the three things or as many things that you want to recommend to these people who are starting out their business because i got this message kind of every day sahil market is already saturated there are so many affiliate marketers there are so many these coaches all these people in the market if i'm starting my journey today from day 1 month 1 week 1 how would i start my thing like what are the things i would keep in mind whether i'll be able to sustain it or not uh when it come to saturation uh, i could remember uh, uh, an example that my brother gave me he said uh you know everything is limitless as my i think it back it's back in maybe 5 years back and uh, there is no way that anything is saturated uh, can you give me a few examples and i was you know kind of thinking i don't know what are you talking about and he gave me a very simple example he said how many songs have you listened ever i said maybe endless he said every single day there is someone making a new composition so mm-hmm. it's never saturated there's always something new something different it could be just one small string i like definitely i don't know much about music but it could be small little thing but never imagine that anything is saturated you always have your own story that can make you stand out from the crowd what have whatever happened to me definitely i can relate to someone but not that exactly the same story of someone else if i am sharing like the other day i was sharing the mess in my house because i was doing that live session it means that other it happens to others too but they are just thinking that you know maybe i have a child um uh, maybe uh, i don't have a support i cannot do it but when i share those things they know okay this happens to her too so if she's managing it i only try to you know uh, see in like uh, keep my ear in the back that if he's fine as long as he's fine he can create all the mess one is once i complete my session i can spend another 30 minutes to clean everything else so i would say when they are starting out uh, there's nothing like saturation every industry has so many people out there and if you want to make 5000 dollars or 10000 dollars a month and you are in a too high ticket affiliate marketing you don't need hundreds and thousands of people everybody needs 10 people i can work, if i have a friend circle uh, maybe my 10 friends are different your 10 friends are different we never say that friends are going to get saturated so if you need 10000 dollars your 10 students will be different my 10 will be different so there is nothing saturated and the other the second thing that i would uh, tell them is to have a little bit of uh, uh, patience especially i can i can give the example of being a mother um like you know when a mother is expecting right i don't i even i'm a mother i don't know how my child looks like right but we spend that 9 months it's it's a whole journey uh mood swings back pain um you know cravings it so many things happen to our body but we spend that 9 months because we know in the end we are going to see that beautiful little child right so we know the beauty of that journey so when you're starting out your your business it's not one day two day or one month or two month 
normally that's the what a newbie start with right that maybe uh, i'm going to make money in next 10 days 20 days they get impatient but when you're starting your journey what's 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 rushing you are not starting it to end it in the next month you didn't came to uh, you know go away you came to stay if i'm expecting and i am uh, going to have a child i want him to uh, you know grow uh, go to school go to college become person uh, a successful person so that's a whole journey so have that mindset that i'm going to nurture and nourish it slowly and then i'm going to see the magic absolutely amazing you gave a very good analogy here that having uh, especially as a mother uh, you can you wait for 9 months to get the result up you yes. don't say in month 5 like why is it not coming why is it not working what, where it is <laughs> right you, you know we don't do that stuff because we know the process same thing happens yes. when when a uh, a baby who is let's say 1 month old we don't say him or her to like let's speak let talk to me exactly we know that he or she can do it at this time because it needs time to get nurture it needs time to get we have to feed that person we have to wait till maybe year 2 year 3 when they start even saying mama papa and then we will we know that this is a process same yes. thing in the business don't treat it as a shiny object syndrome don't treat it as a i have made my facebook account i put my tiktok reels and then now cause my money is coming this this all why people are not buying from me like you started a week ago and you were imagining yes. you were expecting a client so fast this this is not the right mindset i would say if anyone has that fix it it is a process it is a journey it will take time usma is here not just because she started her journey 75 days back like she started her journey 2019 she has done all these things in order to reach here and in order to find like what is the thing that is going to work for her and now we are here so it is a process if she would have imagining or thinking about in 2019 january i started and in march or february she is like no money is coming nothing is working i should quit this business then we wouldn't be here right yeah. we wouldn't be doing this interview so have some patience that is the biggest biggest uh, take away that you should and usma when it comes to start from a platform because a lot of people get confused as well should they start from facebook instagram tiktok or uh, like some other platform linkedin what is your advice when it comes to high ticket affiliate marketing which platform would you advise to start from what is the step one uh, to start that journey okay uh, for high ticket specifically uh, i have seen many people going to tiktok but for some reason uh, i don't really recommend that uh, because number one thing is let's say i am putting five videos a day on tiktok and i might can see that my video uh, is you know maybe it has got viral i got 11000 views but i cannot control my audience there those 11000 i'm not even sure how much of them are my dream time it could be that you know like my parents in the back That's it fine. could be that <laughs> it could be that you know all those 11 out of 11000 people 60% of them were teenagers and they were just scrolling from tiktok it could be there are people who who are you know already business persons and they are scrolling but it will kind of make me demotivated that in out of 11000 nobody wants to buy from me nobody even came to talk to me maybe i did something wrong so what happened maybe the product is not working so instead of you know getting that kind of demotivation i would uh, recommend going on facebook first of all i feel it's uh, uh we can pick and choose uh we can you know check the profile with, before accepting someone into our world um and definitely the concept is dream client is there and it's i think uh, again tiktok i feel it's not really reliable i have already got banned one of my uh, account and it happens to you know multiple of us uh, account gets blocked when somebody reposts or something so facebook i think is more of reliable and second i would say is instagram yes. Great. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I I I would agree on the same point because on TikTok it's like scrollers, not searchers. Yes. On True. Facebook, that that's the difference. When you want to build your business, you don't you don't want just the scrollers to scroll through your profile and in seconds they make a decision whether Rizma is good or whether Rizma is a scam. A lot of people does that thing as well in the TikTok. A lot of a lot of uh, you're gonna get a lot of hate. you're going to get a lot of trollers i know that when i started on tiktok last month 
I posted my first house video that I got this first house out of the business income and people were saying it's Airbnb, it's a rented place, you are making fool of, fool of us. And I was like, what kind of market is this? What kind of people are they? And then they, it was not easy for them to digest, like we can make this kind of money in this short period of time. Completely different crowd anyways. Yeah, yeah. and uh, when it comes to the mentorship, Uzma, because this is what is going on. People are buying the product yeah. right now. They buy the product. They don't get support. The other person is not answering the calls. They are not answering the replying back to their messages. They are just saying that, hey, do it yourself just to make some of this thing. And that's it. That's all you need to do. There is no proper support for those people. When it comes to investing in a right mentor, what are the recommendations you want to give? Like do's and don'ts of hiring your first mentor. Um, number one thing I would say is uh, uh, I can give uh, if let's say something has already happened to you what people normally do is they keep on you know thinking that this is something that shouldn't have happened and uh, maybe it's uh, now I'll try to find ways to make it work but I always tell them that uh, let's say you purchased a book from someone maybe you wanted to learn English and you purchased a book from someone um, and that salesperson told you he will help you learn the book uh, and learn English, but maybe he just closed his show forever he and do you don't even know where that person is. No, what will you do? You will give up on your idea of learning English or you will and um, you know give up on your money that you invested in that book. How about you go to a person who's actually there and teaching so many other people how to speak English? If you, I understand that there will be another investment, but at least it that has more value because you will now start learning English. That, that's the one thing you wanted. So your dream of learning English will come true. So look at that from that perspective. But if they haven't started and they are just planning on to start, I would say, um, first of all, see the content they are kind of adding on their platform, whatever platform they are using. Are they only sharing what they are making? Because it does not matter in the end of the day how much they are making what matters is how much they will help you to make, how much time and effort they are willing to put in you. It's all about you in the end. You started your journey because of you, not for someone else. You have all the rights to talk to, you know, if you see three and four people and you think maybe I want to work with this and you want to go with this, be patient first of all. And, you know, you can, you know, book calls, talk to all two or three of them. Uh, see what people are talking about them. Um, like whenever, even I buy a book from Amazon, I try to go and read the reviews first. Not mm -hmm. only the rating that 4.5%, 4.8%, I go and read the reviews, uh, all of them or some of them at least, right? So maybe that person you are going to start with is not making a lot of money, but he has that knowledge. Yeah. Ask them a couple of questions. Uh, see what people are talking about it because like I said maybe he's not making uh, 10,000 or, or 15,000 dollars every single month but the people around us are, are if, if saying good things about that person and they trust on that person definitely then is the person uh, you you should be working with amazing great pointers here I would completely agree on that use your due diligence plus do your research yeah. go talk to their students even like has Yes. What is the experience working with that person, with that, with their student? Not just, obviously, if you come directly to a mentor, they're already at that stage and they are making money. It's all, everything looks all good. But when you talk yeah. to their, some of the student, it's like, you, there is a red signal. There is like, this person is not supporting a lot. This person is just making yeah. his or her own money. And at the end of the day, we are just sitting here and not getting replies. We are not even, when we go even on calls, these are like, you have to do these three things. That's it. And yeah. that is not a uh, mentorship. I, I would say Priyanshu is here. She said, he said, uh, mentorship can save you a lot of time. Absolutely. A perfect yes. mentor focus on student results rather than their own. A absolutely. That's what I said by his mentor. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. Hafsa said mentorship is a transformation of person and business. Absolutely. It is a transformation of yes. you first. And then, and as a result, you make some result, which is in monetary terms. It's not about making you just money. And because you can, I have seen people making $10,000 once out of a fluke, out of their luck, but then they were not consistent. Every month they have to struggle now even to reach $5,000.
right? So be use your due diligence before you invest. Talk to their students, get their reviews, see what they are saying, how how much, what is the level of support they got, and all that stuff, which will help you to save your time and money as well, which is very important. I know everybody's hard earned money. I respect that. Being I know when I came to Canada, I had to do all those odd jobs uh, to reach here. So make sure you use your due diligence. Absolutely great. I what are the advices? A, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I remember a uh, someone came to me um, uh, almost a few weeks ago, and uh, she she was kind of you know comparing me with another person, saying that that person is always also saying that they will provide mentorship. So how are you different? So I said, uh, I am kind of an open book. Anyone in my friend list, you're most welcome to go and talk to them about me. I have shared my students. If I have to hide something, I would never share who's enrolling in my program. You are open and go and talk to all of them. You can go talk to my coach and then come back to me. So definitely, if you know you are not doing anything wrong, you will not be afraid of sharing those things agree on that completely agree on that and that's the confidence that you are getting when you talk to people right not just hiding someone not just trying to go here and there because you know you at the end of the day you did something wrong or you made money out of just some doing unethical stuff yeah. so make sure uh, you you do that talk to their coach as well if you want to talk to their student uh, and if that person is confidently saying hey talk to my students there is something you have to yeah. literally you will get that green signal at this time this person is super confident right what they are doing okay i, was, I, I, I don't want to end this interview for sure but i'm feeling like we should share more anybody who has any questions you want to ask Uzma or me feel free to do that uh, i don't want to end this interview but one last question i would be asking Uzma for beginners what are the advices or takeaways golden nuggets that you want to share to those people who are struggling who have not able to crack their first high ticket sale yet uh, and just waiting for their time to come what do you want to say to those people oh uh, okay and i think i give all the examples from being a mother uh let's say my uh, my son is one month one year old right and he's not walking so I, my thing is instead of thinking that, okay, he's one year old and normally child is, it's the age when kids start walking and he's not walking and I'm not going to do anything, let's give up. Of course, I'm not going to give up on my child, right? Mm -hmm. What I will do, I will try to do everything, maybe give him massages, go to physiotherapist, go to specialist, uh, try to have him stand every single day. Maybe I will cry in the process, get demotivated in the morning, but I will keep on doing different things to make it work. So if let's say you are trying to track your first high first ticket sale, first, you know, take a notebook, take a pen and see what are you actually doing. And many times, um, even you told me, Uzma, write it down. Yeah. Because when we start writing down, we start feeling that, oh, this is the thing that was missing. It should be there. It gives us so much clarity when you write down things. So write down each and everything that you have been doing in a day uh, first, and then, you know, try to add different things. If you already have a coach, go talk to him and tell him, you know what, this is how a day looks like to me. What should I add? Uh, not everything works sim uh, same in, uh, for the same person. Maybe uh, for me, Facebook works perfect. Maybe for you, TikTok is going to work. Um, it depends. Maybe for me, email marketing is a good thing, but for you, uh, uh, going on videos, making videos are going to be a good option. So always try to come up with the new ideas and see what's going to work for you. Like I said, um, you will never give up if your child is not walking. You will make sure that even at age of two, he starts working. So keep doing things. Take on adding more ideas. Amazing. That's a great point. Priyanshu, she already answered your question where you asked how to stay productive all the time. Write down all the stuff, see what you are doing in the day. And keep the distraction away. You shared a TikTok video yesterday. Keep the keep the all the gadgets away when you are trying to make a presentation, when you are trying to do a session, all that stuff. Keep that away. That's all. And make a habit. Every uh, our student knows that I talk about in our coaching program. Like make a habit to write stuff down, not remember stuff. A lot of time we we'll like oh. I remember that I'll do that tomorrow. And then you forget that. Then you remember next week, oh, I didn't do that. That's so because you didn't have a habit of writing it down. So make sure you do that. A lot of questions popped up from Priyanshu and uh, Virendra. 
Jay is there, Saloni is there. Okay, let's start with Saloni, girls first. What are best ways to cut out negativity that we face day-to-day -day life, internal and external? Negativity. So uh, it depends on if it's external. Normally, I think it starts when you, uh, instead of starting your day working on yourself, you start your day checking your phone. I think that's when the negativity starts. Um, if you're starting out your day and, you know, I'll just take out my phone and start watching stories, what, what she is doing, what she is doing, what she is doing, what will happen? Maybe somehow I will start seeing, okay, so she's making money. She is getting results. What happened to me? So start your day working on yourself first and then start looking what others are doing for the later time. So you will see next activity. That's the number one thing. Number two, if there's some person, let's say that is consistently giving you negativity, I would say uh, you, if that is your friend or someone, you can you know just uh, respectfully talk to them that, hey, I, I will be removing you from a friend list or some. If that person is, you know, some other social media person that is not even closer to you, I mean, you can just block that negativity. We have that option. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I always say this thing, everyone, uh, like, take the, who, someone is bothering you, irritating you, annoying you, take them away. How much time it True. will take you to press that block button or unfriend sure. button? Yeah. It's your business. It's your life. You have to be careful who... Who are the people that you want in your life or business and who you don't want? Just like I don't want any, our, so my students already know that only two or three friends of mine, like college or school friends of mine, who know that I'm into this business. A lot of people get shocked, like, Sahil, how, does, how can this happen? You are already among these platform people. Now people are finding me on TikTok. Some of my college mates or batch mates, they send me a message. Hey, Sail, I saw you, you are doing this. But it's happening after two years. For the yes. first two years, I was all hidden. I was all silent because, again, I didn't want those people to know. I knew that some can be leg pullers. Some can be making trolls of it. Some can be saying, Sahil, this thing won't work and all that. Indirectly installing all the negativity, which, can, which could have stopped me to reach here. So I just didn't add those people best thing you can do it's all in your control what do you want who you want to surround yourself with yes. that's all it matters let the other people wait for your time to come and then you can show them exactly. this is what I did. and then they are be like sahil can you teach me can you now exactly some of yes. my friend says send a message sahil, i want to talk to you can i book a call i was like bye <laughs> we can talk that's fine <laughs> and they try to make fun mm -hmm. of it like that's fine yeah. man I, I it doesn't affect me now at this point i got thick skin i've already seen it all so it's like yeah if they are making fun i'm gonna make it fun too because it's not gonna stop me to do what i'm doing already yeah amazing virendra asked this question uh how did you sold your first high ticket offer when you didn't had any result uh when i started in november uh at that time uh jonathan from uh, freedom breakthrough he was doing a tiktok challenge so I focused getting on small tickets because I knew that uh, the knowledge is limited. I spend my time uh, learning funnels and email marketing because that's what is normally uh, being uh, taught in three day challenge. I try to uh, make my offer stronger. Even at that time, I knew that, you know, uh, I have to give them something else. So instead of just saying, hey, this is a three day challenge, just watch this training and uh, you will be good to go. I, I told them that it will be three days. On the second day, uh, what's the first day? On second day, contact me and I will you know, tell you how to build a funnel. Don't use a paid software. I will teach you the free software and I will give you one call after three days. So you know what to do. You, you can at least get started. And in those 10 days, I was able to crack almost like, uh, I think 2021 small tickets. And uh, again, I had all of them. Mm -hmm. I gave call to all of them. And when you when I work with the numbers, um, I was able to convert two percent out of them uh, within the next one week. So I was able to crack my first high ticket even in the first month. So it's again slow nurturing, I would say. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. But you started with a small low ticket. Yes. Don't she didn't just wait it for let let the high ticket come and then I will do something. She did the put the work and efforts into the low ticket line, nurture them, feed them well, and that's how 
she got her first high ticket uh, i it got remember when we were doing 10 days thing the ch- 10 day challenge was there uzma reached out to me sahil bhai should i even give them a coaching for 10 days like it's, i know these people are not going to buy high ticket i'm going to waste my time and something but i think some things are for your experience not just yes. for money or for a sale which now she has uh, experience to how to work even with low ticket people high ticket people and she's doing mix of all that's a great thing okay a lot of questions popped up sahil ji interview with our hero, hero priyanshu gupta yes we are waiting for her for his 100k so then we're going to be planning he's very close to his 100k that's why we are waiting for an interview Ruchika as hello brother hello both uh, question for Uzma and Sahil what are your biggest mistakes you have learned from and somebody else also asked this question what is your biggest regret i think priyanshu asked that biggest mistake for me uh, would be trying to learn by myself in the first month and trying to be a tech savvy uh, i think uh, especially with the three day challenge uh, it is somehow designed in a way that you start feeling for after marketing i need to build a perfect funnel i need to have a perfect email sequence but that's not the case i i spent i think multiple days uh, and i think i'm not even sure how many funnels i made in the start red theme orange theme yellow theme i don't even know what i was doing but it's like i spent most of most of the time in te- techniques but i should have you know uh spend time building on authority with the learning instead of just uh being a tech savvy so i think if you especially starting with the facebook even if you don't have that funnels or emails list in the start um you don't really you can do those things side by side number one uh and then you can build your uh, authority on the first end and the second mistake i would say i wasn't collecting testimonials in the start i should have done that too now i try to do that i have testimonials but i didn't do anything in the start and uh, the third thing i was not de- de- documenting everything i do have some screenshots some pictures but not every single thing i should be doing that too now i feel like and i try to do that i, I cannot hear you sir right Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yes. Okay, sorry, something happened. Yeah, so I was saying, uh, recapping it, documenting your journey, taking the testimonials, collecting the social currency, all that with will help you in your journey for sure. Keep documenting that stuff. It's very important. Absolutely, Priyanshu said that it's very important. If you ask about my mistakes, she has both. Uh, so I think to uh, first mistake was spending money on paid ads. for my case and i didn't spend a lot i spent like 60 dollars but i got a very great lesson out of that my facebook account got banned uh, because my ha- some hacker get get into it uh, and then it becomes a blessing in disguise for me because that was the time when i came to know about organic marketing so that was the first mistake right away jumping into paid ads second mistake i would say for my case it would be trying to handle all by myself that was the mistake i can consider now reaching at this stage i could have find people who could have do stuff for me rather than doing it by myself a lot of things i still edit my funnels i still sometimes i still make my own content it's it's a lot of time taking stuff i was replying back to all the dms now i have a help where uh, somebody else is also helping me in dms all so these were those were two mistakes that uh, i did in my journey and not the biggest ones but still got something to learn from that Okay, I'm gonna be taking one more last question. We have a lot of questions here. Uh, okay, so Jay asks, how you handle with your kid and your business? That's an interesting one. <laughs> okay, so uh, normally what I do the learning part, uh, which is definitely very important. Um, if I uh, when Ryan sleeps down in the night, like around 11 p.m., I try to spend an hour learning new new things. even i have a, a training today and i was uh, up till almost 3 am to make that training so i would say that's how i handle when he sleeps 
I try to uh, learn something new. If there is any content, I do it when his uh, when when my husband is at home on Sunday. I tell him, you know what, uh, you guys can go enjoy it for an hour, spend that uh, father son time, and I will write down my content for the week. Okay. And for the live sessions, uh, it's uh, something I cannot really, uh, you know, control. Uh, I try to, you know, sometimes put him down to sleep, if not just uh, playing with uh, his toys. And sometimes he's been in my lap and gets cranky. Um, but um, I think that's fine. That had, that, that's how it is, being a, being a mother. And definitely others can get inspired from that too. And, and they understand that, okay, she's a mother, she's doing it, so it's, it's okay. And even I have specified my heart. And I don't know what it's doing, you know. Amazing. <laughs> that was great. Uh, Rajbir said, you are proud mom and boss, babe. Exactly. She is. She is no doubt in that. Prashri said, time is money. I would say, Prashri, you will learn this thing in the coming challenge which you joined. Time is more valuable than money. Always think that this. Time is something which cannot come back. If I have, I cannot bring 2020 back. Doesn't matter if I have a million dollars. It doesn't matter. I can't bring that time. Right. Money can give you money. Sorry, time is more valuable than money. As I said, you can spend more money to buy back the time that you want in your life. But you cannot uh, do that. Like once it's all gone, you have it's all gone. There is no other way to do that. Yes, time is more valuable. Exactly. Awesome, Uzma. It was a great talking to you, sharing all that stuff. I hope people who are watching us live got some great values. Sorry, I couldn't able to answer all the questions again. It's Uzma, I don't know if you have any meeting you want to continue. Um, I'm fine. I have a meeting at 12 p.m. So I still have two hours. I'm fine. If some guys who you are watching us comment, you want more time, just to say time. If you want some more answers to get from answer from Uzma, we will definitely be there uh, here and we can continue this. I, uh, otherwise, I, I can. I'm going to wrap it up best mentors all mothers as much uh, amazing was my best mentor for all mothers absolutely no doubt in that okay. yeah i want to buy my future <laughs> 20 years okay i'm gonna be seeing if there is any important question and otherwise we'll be wrapping it off um people should mentor wisely they should how to stay productive is done being a mother what kind of challenges you face i think she has already shared that how to find the burning desire and what is your burning desire Uzma? That's a different one. Uh, mm, first of all, uh, like I said, I wanted to stay home with my son and that successfully has accomplished. I quit my job and now I want to buy a house and I have, you know, this small picture of a house on my wall uh, that uh, December 2022, I want to buy a house. And of course, in the end, it's again, uh, you know, uh, linked with my son. Uh, when, you know, when I was kind of, you know, uh, in November trying to find ways to work from home, someone told me that, you know what, you are a mother and being a mother, you should spend, uh, you should only be worried about your child and not about making money. And uh, I didn't reply that person back, but I felt that society doesn't normally look at a mother in that perspective. If she's trying to do something in the end, it's again linked with her child. If I want to buy a house, I'm already 30 years old. Maybe I will, you know, I will be here another 20, 20 years maybe. But in the end, if I want to buy a house, it's more connected to my kids that now when he will grow up, he will be a teenager. He will not see that the, uh, the time that I have seen it or his struggles will not be the same that uh, I'm struggling. So uh, I think that is one of the things again, connected with my child. I want him to have more space when he's playing. I know he wants to go outside and watch the birds. That's why I have two parents in the house. But let's imagine if he has an own small uh, corner of lawn and he's playing there and he has birds and all. That's a different scenario, right? So definitely, that's what I want to do now. Absolutely. That's the biggest, biggest burning desire I have. Like what you can imagine giving your kids your family a life for which they really deserve because we are doing we all entrepreneurs are doing everything for especially for us as well but more for the family and the upcoming the future life that we can give to those people uh, which they really deserve and they don't have to complain they don't have to wait for the things they don't have to wait for christmas sale to get a thing so that is i think that's what i believe in as well sometimes i say it to my wife like I want my kid to have that kind of like if he or she says that I want to buy this dad, I don't want to say that 
let let the paycheck come and then we will think about it and they're like you want to buy it get it just go to the counter and cash it out that's all that, that's what the true i would say then you will feel successful that you are able to give the the life that they really want and they feel blessed at the same time you are passing on that stuff to them uh, what do you suggest if a newbie not getting results how to get motivated and keep working on that path uh like i said um it depends if you have started with the mindset of uh, doing it for a couple of months or if you have started with the mindset of doing it for lifetime if you uh wanted to do it for the lifetime again write down the things that you are doing in a, in your day um it could be that something is not working for you because you are doing it in a in a way that uh, that was not the right um there this you know if you are uh, just trying to pack a first high ticket sale let's say it's divided it's learning it's marketing it's prospecting maybe you are doing marketing very well but you are not doing prospecting very well maybe uh, when you uh, you know put out your content it's great but when you go and talk to those people in the inbox you are missing something there but you are not even talking about it or you are not even realizing you you might have a you know master yourself in uh, handling those objections so try to write down each and everything and then um, if you have a coach talk to that person and see where you are missing and uh, add different kind of flavors i would say let's say i'm making something i'm cooking something and still not tasting good i will try to add more salt in it maybe some more spices in it and you know to to make it the level that i want uh, i actually wanted it so try to add more flavors and see where at which point it start working great 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 example great analogy she shared again all the gold nuggets people who are watching us live i hope it is valuable uh that stuff that she is sharing with uh, with you all it's it's going to be helpful in your journey for sure all right osma thank you so much uh, one second my camera cut off uh, okay i'm going to be taking it off can you zoom one second wait yeah but thank you so much for your time and for sharing all those cool nuggets with our audience people who were watching us live they of course would have get value from it so i can't wait for you on, on another interview when you'll be cracking your 50k and 100k mark i'm anxiously waiting for that time and we will do another interview thank you so much once again usma for your time and we will definitely connect back later come back with another interview show Thank you everyone for watching us. Thank you for your support. You're welcome.